Today I'm going to show you an incredibly easy way to make a heater light source out of Crisco. You guys saw what happened to Texas last year during the winter. That was crazy. I want to show you an incredibly easy way. You can just go to Walmart. You can go to any store, pick this stuff up. It's one of the most simple ways to make this heater slash light source out there. Whether you're worried about another emergency situation where the power will go out, maybe you're left stranded in the middle of winter, or you just wanna store this in your little prepper closet and have a backup in case anything happens. Be sure to watch this entire video and have this tool in your back pocket. This is your first time on our channel. My name is Cohen, and here at Riverside Homestead Life, we always give you great videos, whether it has to do with gardening, how to build something, health hacks, or how to save your life. If electricity goes out, how to build a root cellar prepper center. If you like those kind of tips, be sure to take a moment, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, let's get going. Okay, so what we're doing today is making radiant heaters and a great light source out of Crisco. Good old fashioned Crisco. And this is one of the most simple ways that I have found that I think anybody and everybody could handle. There's not a lot of crazy tools involved. There's not a lot of stuff you need to go get. You can pretty much get this done on your next grocery shopping trip. You guys see that little flame right there on the eye? You know what that means? That's what this was intended for. Okay, so let's get to the goods of this. The big can of this, this right here is a three pound can. You can also buy a six pound can. The six pound can will burn for 72 days, eight hours a day. That's incredible. And as for this three pound can, it'll burn for 36 days at eight hours a day. You can't buy any other candles at the store that will outperform that. Let alone candles are way expensive compared to buying Crisco. So one of the great things about this is you can create candles. In a power outage, it gets dark, you don't want to use up all your batteries. You can make a candle that lasts a very long time. The other cool aspect of this is you can make terracotta pot heaters. These type of heaters can warm small rooms and now you have a radiant heater. You guys saw what happened in Texas and in Missouri this February. You don't want to get caught up in that. So let's take you through how to make these guys. It's a super simple process that each and every one of you guys can do. You can pick this stuff up at local stores, have it stored away, be prepared. Let's get started. Okay, so as far as these terracotta pot apparatuses, we can do a numerous assortment of things. For example, a lot of you have a utensil holder, much like this, grab it. And maybe you have a fruit metal basket. Okay, so all you gotta do is take that utensil holder and slide one of your small cans of Crisco in it. You can throw the terracotta pot right over the top, put the bottom on top to cap the hole, or you can take any coin and cover the top of the hole. The sweet thing about this utensil holder is it all, it's made out of all metal, so you're not gonna worry about it burning up on you. Super safe. And then you can have the terracotta pot on top radiating the heat. And as for these small jars, you can simply put a small terracotta pot over the top and have a light source and a little radiant heater and since it'll be sealed at the bottom, just leave the top hole open. So the other cool thing about these fruit baskets is you could just place something in there, 
throw one of these terracotta pots over the top. It'll let air in the bottom, cap it, another little radiant heater. Okay, so that kind of covers a little bit about how you can make the radiant heaters. Let's show you how to do the candles. Now the other great reason for using jars with lids is this Crisco, or this happens to be a knockoff, great value brand from Walmart. You can save some money by buying it. It's the same stuff. But when you move that stuff into the jars and temperatures reach over 80 degrees, it's gonna liquefy. So it's really nice to be able to throw a lid on, seal that up and store it. So now the easiest way that I've found to get this Crisco into the jars is you scoop it out of the tubs, throw it in a little glass measuring cup, and what you do is you throw it into the microwave for 30 seconds. Okay, so Alyssa threw it in the microwave for about 60 seconds. We have our, our setting on our microwave a little bit lower and we had quite a bit. You'll just wanna fill up your jar to the bottom of the screw on rim. Just like that. Once you've got it filled, go ahead and throw it in the fridge or freezer to get it hardened up. So on these bigger jars, these guys right here are the ones that are gonna last like 72 days at eight hours a day. Super amazing. Fill it up just below the thread rim. the store pick up a pack of these really long candles take the candle put it upside down mark just below the rim cut off that mark that way the candle will fit in there perfectly then take the candle Slide it all the way down, right through the middle. And then take a pair of scissors or a knife, trim the wick down. This will lessen the amount of smoke coming off the wick. And it's as simple as that. We trimmed the wick, then all you do is light the candle. This one right here took an entire three pounder plus maybe a quarter of another one. So this guy right here is gonna last you between 50 and probably 70 days at eight hours a day. That is one easy way to have a light source for a very long period of time if your electricity goes out. All right, Frank? You guys can also simply take this off, shove a candle right down in the middle I've already scooped this one out, but imagine a full one. And you can burn these right out of the tubs. So on that small candle, it only took about maybe 10 minutes in the freezer for it to harden up. That didn't take very long at all. So on these smaller jars, and even smaller ones than this, like a small jam jar, all it takes is a birthday candle. Just take that birthday candle, slide it right down in the middle, and that's all you gotta do. You have a candle right there that will burn for probably about a week. If your candle happens to be not long enough, you can take a longer candle and again, just trim it to size and that'll work just fine too. So if you've got the time to transplant these things to a jar, it's really nice because you can just throw a lid on, put your source of light out,
shown you guys how to make a simple source of heat and light that each and every one of you can do. You don't need to be next to a forest and have an endless supply of wood and have a wood fire. You might be in an apartment, a condo, in the middle of a city. This is something that you can do. If you happen to have the misfortune of being in Texas or Missouri, be prepared. Have this in your back pocket, have this downstairs, have it in a closet, ready to go. So you've got something to combat that emergency situation a little bit. Let's get into a few facts about this scenario. A few things that you guys need to know about what to expect and safety precautionary measures. You might wonder, does it smell like you're at McDonald's? Does it smell like you're at fast food? Does it smell like a bunch of grease cooking? No, it is completely odorless. Now, if you don't trim the wick, it's recommended that you trim the wick, that way you don't get the smoke. It will not smoke if you keep the wick trimmed. And it will burn slower and longer if you continue to trim the wick. Okay, another couple really important facts that I want you guys to know about this. If you get into a super emergency situation, it is freezing cold outside. You're gonna use this for a source of heat to keep you alive. You need to minimize your space to like a very small room for it to radiate enough heat to bring up the temperature of that small space. We're talking about like a bathroom, a closet, putting a tent up in a small room and placing this little radiant terracotta heater in a tent. That's how it's gonna make a difference with warmth in a very cold situation. Otherwise, you're gonna look at this as a hand warmer. This has been running for about 10 minutes and I can't hold my hand on it. So you're gonna be able to keep your hands warm. You're gonna feel a little bit of heat as long as you're close to it. And you're gonna have a great source of light that's gonna last a very long time. You're not gonna be burning through batteries. Maybe you guys are in a situation where you, you got a lot of carpet. You're uh, in a room that's got carpet, that's where you're gonna post up through the emergency. Uh, grab a piece of tile or a piece of slate like this, something that will protect it from the ground. Maybe throw some tiles on the ground or some bricks to get it off to allow airflow through. Put it on top, put your little unit on top. Maybe you're worried about the metal getting hot. Should be good to go there. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're in a small space, you definitely wanna have a very, very small source of fresh air coming in. Always smart to have some fresh air coming in when you're burning a fire. In another video, I show you guys how to make this terracotta pot heater with tea light candles. I'll add a link to it right up here. In that video, I had many people comment that they've used a system like this to actually heat up the pipes underneath their sinks to keep them from freezing and it worked wonders. I also had the group of folks that were critics that said it didn't help, it didn't do anything. Well, having this system is better than having nothing. Of course, a wood fire, propane heaters are gonna put off much more heat, but in the end, you might run out of propane. You might not be able to burn a fire. This is a process that almost anybody can do in any situation. Whether you're out in the middle of nowhere or you're in the middle of a city in a small condo or apartment. I hope you guys like tips like this. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've tried this system. If you've been in a situation, an emergency situation where the power went out, an extreme situation where something like this could have helped you, I wanna hear about it. Also, please hit the like button if you found value in this video. It really helps out the station. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I will continue looking for great tips, videos to give you weekly. Take care, everybody.